So Dry Dry Ruins released an MK Tour this week, and now everyone is expecting that it's going to be in Wave 5 with the Booster Pass. I'm not here to shut down this theory, but I don't think it is nearly as likely as everyone seems to think it is. Do I think it won't be in 8D? Well, I can't really say, but I just don't believe it'll replace Koopa Cape, pretty much. Do I know something you don't? Well, probably not, but let me tell you what I'm expecting in Wave 5 and onward. For those of you worried about leaks, you don't really need to fret too much here. The main leak has been wrong a couple of times now, and we've gotten to the point anyway where the leak isn't even impacting my predictions because it's largely incomplete. The leak was mainly spoiling Wave 3, if anything, which is a distant pass now. There are two leaks I will continue to use, though, that have been available to us since right after Wave 1's launch. This is the Booster Quartz Pass banner graphic and the Prefix leak. Now, the Prefix leak has also been wrong a few times now, but I believe it still has some merit. And the banner really only tells us a few things now, if any. And if these things bother you, now is your last warning to click away because I'm going to talk about them extensively. And finally, we know the main rule. All the content we're getting in the Booster Course Pass appears to be from Tour. So if something's in that game, it's probably on the board for 8 Deluxe. Anyways, let's get into the good stuff. We are expecting the following distribution of courses in the final two wave. One SNES track, one GBA track, three GameCube tracks, two Wii tracks, five Tour Cities, and four Tour Originals. Now, initially we had two GameCube tracks and three Wii tracks in the last two waves, but Maple Tree Way moved up from what we thought was Wave 6, replacing a GameCube course in Pack 3. Now, the Wii slots seem to be pretty simple up until a week ago, and that's because Koopa Cape and Rainbow Road were the only courses left in Tour to not be ported over yet. But of course, Dry Dry Ruins came over to Tour this week, putting the world in disarray. And let me tell you, I don't know if that necessarily means it makes it to 8D. Now this is because of the Banner Leak. It has not failed us yet, and it only has two more courses left to confirm, one of which clearly seems to be Koopa Cape. This leaves us with one more slot for a Wii course, which appears to be the last course in the Booster Course Pass. The final course in the Final Cup, the one that would be opposite of 3DS Rainbow Road on the selection screen and I think there is no chance in hell that it's not Wii Rainbow Road. The leaks we have seen up to this point cannot be considered as fact until they make an official announcement. Just because we think there are three GameCube courses left and two Wii ones doesn't mean that the final product will be that way. Remember, we're not supposed to actually know how many are on the way. We haven't been promised three GameCube courses by any means, we just think we know. They could also change their mind on Koopa Cape. I don't think they will, but it's not out of the question. Additionally, if you ask me, there's a suspicious amount of tour originals that we can't even put a name to right now that perhaps Dry Dry Ruins could replace. I don't want to rule it out. I just don't think that Dry Dry Ruins is replacing a Banner League course. We haven't really seen the precedent for that yet. I understand that like Dry Dry Ruins, Riverside Park was a recent addition to tour that effectively cut Chief Jeep Island and the GBA Bowser Castles in line for the Booster Course Pass. But none of those GBA courses were on the Banner League like Koopa Cape was. Well, except for one and that's the other unconfirmed course that the Banner League showed us, Sunset Wilds. If you ask me, Koopa Cape and Sunset Wilds are locks for Wave 5, because Wii Rainbow Road being a lock for the pass is kind of contingent on it being in Wave 6. So with that all being said, the only unknown retro courses left in the pass, barring a massive surprise, are a SNES course, two GameCube courses, and probably a third one, but maybe not. What might they be? Well, the SNES track feels like it could be anything, no one really category in particular feels super likely. Let's run through the eight categories really quickly. First, it could be a Mario Circuit, but we already added Mario Circuit 3. Now, I know that there is a banner leak that appears to show MC1. I don't know if that's a placeholder because it's the first track, but it feels like this almost feels debunked just because they went with MC3 instead. I guess that technically breaks our banner leak theory, but I kind of categorize these SNES tracks really, you know, by category. So the fact that we got one in already leads me to think that we're not going to get another. Donut Plains would potentially be on the table, but Donut Plains 3 was already a base track in Mario Kart 8. I don't really expect another one to come. You could do a Ghost Valley, but it would feel a little bit redundant after adding Boo Lake just two waves ago. When it comes to the more likely candidates, I think of Chaco Island, Cuba Beach, and Vanilla Lake. But with Chaco Island, it kind of feels hard to believe that they would do it after adding Chaco Mountain. And for those who played Super Surfy, you might know that, you know, in that game, the Chaco Islands had a striking resemblance to Sunset Wilds, which we think is going to be in this wave also. Now, there was a time where I thought Koopa Beach 2 would be a pretty viable option, but with DK Summon in Wave 4, that likely pushes Koopa Cape back into Wave 5, and I just don't really see it as particularly likely to return if Koopa Cape's in the wave. 
Maybe if Dry Dry Ruins happens to replace it, but like mentioned, I don't think that's going to happen. With Vanilla Lake, it feels like it could be possible, but again, like with the Ghost Valleys, Snowland is in Wave 2, and it seems like it would almost be redundant to add another one. But this is where we start to realize that there's not really many other good options. Rainbow Road's in the game already, and that leaves us with the Bowser Castle courses, which have no tour presence whatsoever, which is a deal breaker. But I've heard rumors that these courses might actually be data mined. It'd be a really nice surprise if we saw one, and I think that'd be pretty hype, honestly, seeing the lack of Bowser Castle courses in this game. Of the remaining GameCube tracks not in 8D, the following are in Tour, and that includes Daisy Cruiser, DK Mountain, and Dino Dino Jungle. However, I've heard rumors that there are elements from Mushroom Bridge and Mushroom City that were data mined in the game also. I already thought that it was likely that one of these courses would appear to begin with, because I find it hard to believe that they would bring back both DK Mountain and Dino Dino Jungle at the same time, especially as these courses have both been remade already. It sounds crazy for there to be five more tour cities, especially since it would be you know weird if a city debuted in Mario Kart 8. However, they did not backpedal at all on Wave 4 and launch three city courses, and I don't think that would have happened if there weren't more cities on the way. They're just going to have to pick up their pace. For that reason, I still think that Wave 5 is going to have three new cities. I think they'll need to start getting the tour original courses out sooner than later as well, but at least with them, they can release those in AD first, as we've seen with Sky High Sunday and Yoshi's Island. With this all said, here are my predictions for Wave 5. I'm not going to go light on these guesses either, I'll just come up with some new names for unknown tracks. And while there may be some questions now, I promise you that they will be answered as we get further into the video. Predicting the final two waves truly feels like a puzzle, or solving one I guess. Wave 6 won't necessarily be reactive to Wave 5 is the thing, but both waves might impact the others. I'll give a reason for picking Dino Dino Jungle and Vanilla Lake soon, but let's talk about the original courses first. Now you might think that I'm going with Piranha Plant Code because, well, it's the only original course of the presumed remaining four that we know of. And while there's some validity to that, that's not fully the case. You see, we have five character slots now on our roster, and I think this might help us figure out what our remaining themes might be. Birdo coming to Wave 4 was telling because she came with a Yoshi themed course. And what this means is that I think it might be possible that potential characters might reveal our final courses. Initially, when I saw five character slots, I thought one thing immediately. It means we will get an uneven amount of new characters in Wave 5 and 6. And I was expecting that the split would be of two characters in Wave 5 and three in Wave 6 because it would kind of be a build up in that regard. But then I thought about something else. Does Nintendo care about the order of the character select screen? Maybe not, but I think it's entirely possible, actually. Even though this screen is a bit of a mess, there are a lot of convenient patterns in it. I think this matters because, well, King Boo is diagonal to Birdo on the select screen right now, and we all remember back in Double Dash that PD Piranha was King Boo's partner. When revealing Birdo, they made a pretty big deal about her returning from Double Dash, and again, retro content is just a big theme here. I think it's possible they want to bring back everyone from most of the older games that are in tour already. And I think it'd be a slam dunk to add PD Piranha in Wave 5, alongside Piranha Planet Cove as such. So I'm updating my prediction to include just one more new character in Wave 5, followed by a four character explosion in Wave 6. So let's move on to that one. Here's what I have for a hypothetical Wave 6, now next to my Wave 5 selections. First things first, let's talk characters. I don't know what it is, but I feel like Funky Kong just feels like a lock. It has felt like they've been pandering to the MK Wii players recently, and they changed their design philosophy in a sense when bringing back the shortcuts on Gorge and DK Summit because they knew they were popular. They moved Maple Treeway up from Wave 6 to Wave 3, and they might even add Dry Dry Ruins instead of another Double Dash course. Do we think it would really be surprising if Diddy and Funky just appeared to bring back every Wii character? Besides, I've heard rumors that they might follow up Yoshi's Island with an eventual Donkey Kong Country themes course. Dixie Kong is the more logical choice, honestly, however, that was also true when MK Wii launched. And the fact that they made such a big deal out of Birdo being a returning character makes me feel like they may be focused on bringing back past favorites. The final line of reasoning for me is that Funky felt like DK's alternate in MK Wii in the same way that Dry Bowser was for Bowser. And wouldn't you know it, if Diddy and Funky returned at this point, Funky could fit right next to Dry Bowser on the same line of Bowser and DK on the character select screen. I had another thought that Pauline feels like she'd fit next to Pink Gold Peach and, you know, it feels like she's a deserving character, and my friend Soldier mentioned, you know, that she'd fit in with the DK characters as well. But with New York Minute in the game and the fact that they wouldn't really put Diddy below Funky on the character select screen, 
it feels a little unlikely to me. But wait, there's still two more unique courses and slots. Well, right below Funky we have a row with all the Kooplings. And then I thought about it. If we think it is unlikely that another retro Bowser's Castle track returns in a game with only one Bowser Castle out of potentially 96 courses, and there is a mysterious original slot open right before what we think is Wii Rainbow Road, is it possible that we're getting a new Bowser themed original? I think it is more than likely if a lot of our other originals are taking generic core scenes for, you know, common characters like Yoshi and DK. But what character would come along with it? And would it even be a castle stage? Possibly not, because it would be a little strange for a tour original with no track prefix to share a name with a pre-existing course already. I could see them doing something with, you know, that carnival theme from 3D World, honestly. But anyways, there's a few options for characters. Kamek feels like the safest bet, the, you know, the one I'd pick, especially since he was supposed to be in MK64. Maybe you would instead get like a library themes course with him. But there's also, you know, Hammer Bro, who's, you know, interesting since they just replaced the Yoshi statues on Dry Dry Ruins and Tour with Hammer Bro ones. Though I think this might just be because Yoshi does is coming to Tour at some point also. I can't imagine that they introduce a character alongside a normal retro track as well. King bob feels like a long shot, but hey, you never know. I mean, he was featured on Bowser's Factory from the arcade games, and I, does that mean anything? I don't know. The last character slot is a big head-scratcher, though, because the row is filled with out-of-series characters, and given all the content from the Booster Course passes from MK Tour, and MK Tour features only the Mario universe, it feels like any character put here would feel completely out of place unless it was something like me Costume B. Or maybe even Rob, who knows. I know there were rumors of a bathroom course out there, but that just sounds ridiculous to me. Like, at some point, I feel like Nintendo's gotta just be trolling the data miners, because, I mean, they know that we know, I think, at this point. There's no way. They'd have to be naive, right? There's so much content on YouTube just talking about, like, what's gonna be the future of the past. But, anyways, what does a Mii track look like? Well, perhaps it could be something that is like Mario Kart Home Circuit, unironically. And perhaps the bathroom would just be, you know, one part of said course. Now, I know I'm grasping at straws here, but seriously, we have so little to work off of, and what else would make sense? Would they really just put a non me character next to Mii's and not have the me in the corner? It feels unlikely to me. Keep in mind, the only way a me outfit reveal would be non-disappointing is if we got, like, three other characters in the same pack as well. Anyways, to wrap things up, let's do some quick comments on the rest of my predictions here, because you guys have probably been questioning those for a little bit now. I still feel good about Vancouver being Wave 6. My ideal world is that there are just no cities in Wave 6 and they move it up to 5, but I think that's unrealistic at this point. LA Laps is done and has been done, and I don't think there's any reason to not have it next wave. It feels like a lock as a summer release. For the other cities, I chose Madrid, Athens, and Rio as our final cities. Rio and Athens would be the best for creating the most spread out map of tour cities, and Madrid feels like the biggest snub up to this point. And my first alternative would be Rome, maybe taking the raceway name I have listed from Rio. Now, I feel like Vancouver had no reason to wait this long, but perhaps it would make sense if it was mirrored by a course, you know, called, like, Athens Acceleration in the other Wave 6 Cup. Besides the physics-based names, this feels like a good combination of past and future that I think would be kind of a cool send-off for the past. Otherwise, I don't know why Vancouver wasn't brought back in Wave 2. I think it's been finished since then, so what's the holdup? As for actual retros, here's why I held off on explanations until now. I initially wanted to put Daisy Cruiser in Wave 5. It felt obvious, I predicted it in Wave 4. It just felt right with, you know, the summer and all that. And I put Mushroom City in the Spiny Cup because I wanted to avoid back-to-back -back night tracks with Vancouver in the other cup. It also feels like Mushroom Bridge, of course, has already returned, would be an underwhelming final wave track. Now, here's where this all ties together. I believe that Diddy and Funky are on the way, and we will get a Donkey Kong track in Wave 6. And if that's the case, it is hard to envision a likely jungle-themed track being in the same cup as potentially DK Mountain or Dino Dino Jungle. As such, I put Dino Dino Jungle in Wave 5, which pushes Daisy Cruiser to the final wave. So why Dino over DK Mountain? Well, there's a few reasons. The only reason why I can think DK Mountain would be in is their recent obsession with half-pipes. I believe Bowser's Castle Wii is the only course of half pipes from MK Wii to not be remade recently in tour, and it seems like they wanted to knock all of these course remakes out of the way now and not include half pipes in later entries, and perhaps they can just improvise with one course in BC Wii later. But here's the thing, DK Mountain has already returned as a retro course, like they don't have to do anything with it at this point. 
And this feels more like an argument for Dry Dry Ruins, if anything, which could actually remove a GCN track, potentially. The reasons against Mountain feel stronger. I doubt we would have a new DK course three waves in a row to start. You'd get Summit to the, you know, the potential DKC course in Wave 6, and then this. I also just can't ignore the signs on Coconut Mole with the Dino Dino logo. Of course, if we're taking Dino Dino for that reason, one of these signs also alluded to a Vanilla Lake course. Now, I know a SNES BC feels like it should be the pick, logically speaking, but remember, I predicted an original Bowser course also. So to me, it does feel like that this could work. And with that said, I think I've not just predicted the remaining 16 courses and 5 characters, but backed up all of these predictions in one way or another. This potential solution to the puzzle may not be the right one, and with the endless original course possibilities, it more than likely isn't. However, I believe that this is a viable possibility. And trust me, getting viable possibilities is harder than it sounds. It always feels like there's something that kind of breaks your logic. So I feel pretty good about this one. But anyways, let me know what you all think in the comments or if you expect something different. Thanks for watching and until next time.